has been the most phenomenal thing I've seen. He goes Spirit Passage, mm. maxes the Primal Roar, and just becomes that sustainy tank monster that we're used to seeing. What was it? It was like, it was like early Season 3 slash Season 2, where you saw the tank Rengar just being completely dominant, and even AP Rengar, but that's not anywhere near anything yeah, uh, no, today. No AP Rengar is <laughs> here, but uh, Rengar and Gragas, two huge power picks for the type A snipers that if you're looking for picks and bans, those are the, the champions you're going to want to go for, as well as, like you said, uh, targeting wins Elise. Uh, you can see two of those three bans already coming out. If we see the Rengar, that's going to be a lot of great research and target banning out there from IG. But for type A snipers going up against an IG that we haven't really seen for a while, yeah. it's interesting to see double support bans uh, going up against IG with only an AD carry there as the third. Well, we've seen Annie support make tons of play. Flash Chibbers, the Incinerate five-man stuns that we've seen, not here, but all over the place, like when they just come out. And Fiddlesticks here, three seconds of fear. If you don't build Merc right. Treads or have any kind of tenacity, it's really bad. But Lee Sin getting taken away from Wind slash Zonda in top. And then Gragas, like you said before, next ABC is one of his mid, mid uh, one of his main mid laners. Right. But Zonda instantly going to lock yeah. in the Rengar for the top lane while the side of IG still hover over their picks. The Nidalee could be for Zatai mid, as well as the Vi, potentially in the jungle for Illusion. Yeah, no question about that. It's just going straight for that Rengar. I believe they played it in GPL last yep. night. Uh, if you guys caught the games yesterday watching Taipei Snipers play, good sweet lord. Zonda just does crazy things with a Rengar that a lot of people think of as like a burst assassin. You stack up a lot of attack damage on him, but Zonda just plays him as a sustain monster. That in Season uh, 3, coming into Season 4, just so, so strong. Uh, Spirit Visage, Sunfire Cape, and... Apparently that's all you need. No, you just run right through the whole team and then maybe Trinity Force late game. But the Nidalee and Vi did get locked in here. We do see a hover over Lucian. And Nunu, mm. Nunu has been picking up some steam lately. This isn't 3.14, mind you. This is 3.13. So we're going to see potentially a Blood Boiled up Lucian. And does he need any more mobility? He's got the Relentless Pursuit. He can get away from slows with that. And with uh, Ice Blast, the slow and chase, the kiting potential is huge. And we could see Winds playing Nunu in the jungle. Like, still could be Nunu support. We don't know. It's not It's not his main role anymore like he used to be in Season 2. But uh, they do lock it in. Lucian for O'Real. And Winds most likely taking that Nunu in the jungle. Yeah, but you can see from IG's picks just the priority that they want to place. Uh, Zatai in the mid lane, he's going to get the AP Nidalee. And we've seen that be consistent with great poke performances. Uh, you know, in Season 4, or in the 3.14 patch, mm -hmm. received a little bit of a nerf, but this is still 3.13. Incredibly strong poke damage and could signal a little bit of a poke team comp coming out as Ezreal. Now being hovered over there by Kid. Uh, One of the last great Ezreal players out there is pretty much everyone else has either switched over to Lucian or Jinx. Uh, Kid, really dominant on that champion, and will be going up against. Uh, it is probably going to be. All right, it is. Uh, it, it's hmm. the support. Sona locked in, and that's actually kind of interesting considering, like we said, double support bans in Annie and Fiddlesticks. Yeah, um, there's still some other options. There's Lulu open for a very aggressive poke lane if you want to do that, but Sona fits in really well. She's really squishy. We talked about this yesterday, how she has the health of a melee minion and it gets blown up fairly easily, but health quints can solve that problem. But uh, So, Sona, Ezreal in the bot lane, a lot of poke coming in, Mystic Shots, Hymns of Valor, Power Chords all over the place. Then the AoE synergy in the level 6 point in the lane is very dangerous. Crescendo as well as True Shot Barrage coming in, just something you don't want to face. And it could be a sign of a lane swap. They could put it in the mid, they could put it in the top. But uh, TPS looks like they're hovering over a Leona as we haven't seen much of her at all recently, but... Lucian Leona, that's a pretty good lane. You go in with the Zenith Blade, you have the passive to proc the Gunslinger, right. and if you time it right with her uh, her W, you could proc it twice, but they swap it over to Lulu. That's a little bit more of a legitimate pick here. Leona can get kited out and poked out. Has a lot of good engage, but Lulu's safer. Giant growth coming in slow, and shields and whimsy is always really fun. And Cassidy, someone we haven't really oh seen much God. at all here, because the Asian teams don't seem to really prioritize him. That's, that's actually right, and especially going into Season 4, the 3.14 patch, which mm -hmm. is kind of preseason patch, Ooh. I haven't really seen all that much uh, cast, and it's locked in there. Oh, real going to take that one down, and we'll be on next ABC in the mid lane. We've highlighted him as a Gragas player, but Cassidy kind of accomplishes a very similar role. You have a lot of mobility, yeah. a lot of roam potential, and the ability to just come out of nowhere, blow somebody apart, and to really sort of kite around the edge of those te that uh, team fight, wow. just out a lot of damage. So they're going to pit... PDD is Re Renekton against the Rengar of Zonda, and Zonda oh kind of just destroys Renekton's in lane. I, hmm, no, that's going to be a really interesting match. A lot of players look towards Shivana yeah. versus that Renekton matchup, but to either split even or have a little bit of an edge in some situations, depending on the way that builds and ganks work out. Uh, but for Zonda, he goes Rengar into basically everything, and especially against huh. Renekton, one of the strongest top laners out there. 
He's, I don't think he's had any problems so far, but PDD, one of the best top laners in China, to yeah. give him a run for his money. Oh, man. That, the Nunu pick as well. I wonder if that's going to be a signal for the lane swap as well as an early aggressive invade towards the red or blue. Because you can deny away a red from Vi. She can't start it on purple side. She could start it on purple side, but... Uh, I'm not sure if she's going to go for it or red side. Actually, I forgot what it is. But <laughs> she can start blue, go red. And with the Nunu from wins, I expect a really aggressive invade. All right, so we are closing out picks and bans. There's going to be your final lineups for both teams. You can see Taipei Snipers, they're intense. They're ready to get this down. Uh, in his interview yesterday, it was a mistake that said, you know what, going into this game, we recognize that IG are an incredibly strong team, but they expect that uh, you know they may either be able to pull something out surprising or just uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe because, hey, Taipei Snipers, they've been looking incredibly strong. Uh, before yesterday, actually, top of their group in GPL. So, uh, yeah. Eight and two, so an incredible record there. And now taking on one of the very best teams in not only just China, but in almost the entire world, coming into the first game in our first best of three of the night here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. And we are out onto the rift for our first game of the evening. It's going to be uh, the Azubu Taipei Snipers down there in the bottom. Wins? Just started with a Doran's Blade on Jungle <laughs> Nunu. What are you doing, sir? I will, actually, I'm going to take a quick chance to look at his Masteries or Runes. Let's see here. 71 flat attack damage coming in, a little bit of attack speed. He's got 1% crit rune. So coming in with that, that's <laughs> really going to be interesting. And I wonder if he's just going to go for a standard jungle route. It looks like no as he's heading towards the red and possibly just going to look for a safe uh, line position down the whole map as both teams are mirroring their uh, starts here. They have everybody towards the dragon, a little bit of exchange from PDD and Zonda right now, having uh, Lover Seaboy go up there and help him put out a ward. But... Right now, just a very defensive start, and Zonda just poking away at PDD as well as him just throwing some uh, auto attacks out as well. Yeah, just kind of having fun at the beginning of the game, but we have seen that kind of turn around when you get stopped from backing, can't go back and heal, but hey, it's Rengar, it's, uh, it's Renekton, you're not really going to have too many problems there. A lot of sustain in the top lane, so might not be somewhere to focus just based on the sort of tanky sustain monsters we've been seeing. Uh, and that's actually kind of a contrast between Southeast Asian teams and Chinese teams, because Chinese teams look at the top lane for even carry potential, yeah. Oh, yeah. whereas for Taipei Snipers and a lot of Southeast Asian teams, they pretty much just sit the side laner off on his own island and don't really do all that much. Yeah, we saw a lot of that with Red. Kind of just, <laughs> kind of just sat there all day, farmed up, and became a beast. And uh, now everything's coming in. It looks like it's going to be a red start for Wins as well as a blue start for Illusion. So going to be going uh, blue red and red blue respectively for both sides. And could see a lot of aggression up top as well. You could just give Blood Boil to Zonda, or we could just see farm heavy jungles and look for those level six ganks like we normally are used to seeing from Vi. Yeah, this is fairly standard. Both junglers starting on the bottom half of the map before uh, going for a quick level three, both buffs, and then looking to probably put some pressure ganks top lane. You gank top early, then you might, might look towards the, a lot of mid lane ganks because once you hit level six, Nidalee uh, cast it in both very hard to catch, so yep. I look to gank them out pre six there. All right, so up top, it's just going to be Zonda versus PDD. Just going to roam around a little bit. Down bot, though, it's going to be a very heavy poke lane. We have Piercing Light, Glitter Lances all over the place. Mystic Shots and uh, Hymns of Valor and Power Cords going to be coming in. And just a lot of trading. It's a lot of potions coming out from Mistake. He's got the Biscuit. He's got a lot of red uh, pots. We do see the poke coming in right there. Piercing Light, Gunslinger Passive going to chunk Kid down to below half. And before level 2 is achieved for the side of IG, I think TPS can actually shove out the lane faster, get that level 2 and start to zone away from CS and force at least Mystic Shot uh, attempts from Kid. Yeah, duo lanes are all about that level 2. You can see already just incredible trades, knowing yep. they want to push things. There's wow. a real level 2, and Kid can't do anything about it. Yep, just dash right on in. He's still farming up with the Mystic Shots, and uh, that lane is going to be a little uh, aggressive and poke heavy for a while. It actually looks like they're forcing Kid back to base as he is doing the back. He's not going to cancel it, so he's going to be behind for a little bit and lose out on a, quite a bit of XP if they can shove at the tower on the side of TPS. Yeah, Kid still level 1, Ooh. buys nothing but potions, and comes back into lanes. So uh, Lover Cryboy is actually going to be at level 2 and out-leveling AD carry for the first while. Uh, I've got Illusion sitting top, but with Renekton pushing the wave into the turret, unless they dive Zonda, that's not going to be a lot. They, they could wait for the wave to reset too and capitalize on maybe Zonda aggressively pushing out, but I think he could that's be a little a pretty bit big wave. That. Yeah, it'll fall down pretty fast. I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. But meanwhile, while Illusion's wasting his time, not wasting his time up top, but like sitting up top and trying to help out PDD, we do see Wind still farming up the Wraiths and uh, going towards his Wolves and Golems and just farming back up on that Nunu. And I wonder where that Dorn's Blade is going to go. 
All right, well, it's going to go down here to Wolf uh -oh. Camp. Is now Illusion checks the Wolf Camp. It's going to respawn just in time as he walks away. So great timing there for Wins, knowing exactly when he needed to get there. But nothing quite for Illusion. Ooh. Going in on the next ABC, forces the Flash. Nice Flash, but still Flash blown. Successful gank for Illusion. Could loop back around, try to make a nice little uh, camp around in that mid lane as he is going to go to his race and try to achieve level four. Down bot, though. Kid, once again, getting poked out with PDD, actually trading with Zonda, and Zonda coming out very far ahead. Primal Roars, the heal up. Oh, he's, got, he's got the full stacks. He doesn't look like he's going to use it just yet and save it for another occasion as... Uh, is he actually maxing the roar in the lane? Oh, is they're the going to go for the dive. Uh oh, there's going to be the bullet dive underneath. It's going to be the tank out from Zonda. He's going to flash away, knock it out of turret range, and first blow over to PDD with the help of Illusion coming in. A really good stun coming out from PDD. Still in tower range through the flash of Zonda. So IG gonna snag up a first blood. And you can see that as soon as Zonda went there under turret, he's like, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> Worth the flash away almost immediately. And Wins just wasn't there. Like he didn't really contribute. He walked under turret, got a nice ice blast off. And that's about it. Now, bottom lane, a lot of harass going down on to Mistake. O'Reel does have a very solid advantage over Kid there, at least a level advantage as far as that's concerned. Both AD carries, Doran's blades, but the health potions, and especially that mana potion there for Kid, they keeping him in this lane. Yep, and uh, the potions that Kid picked up before, like you said, it's helping him sustain through a lot of this poke, as well as the heal coming in from Sona there. But we see, man, we haven't really talked about it that much after that first gank. Zatai is over, uh, is about 9 to 10 CS ahead of of uh, next ABC at this point. And ABC is keeping it passive. He's got his flash down. He's forced to sit back, use those null spheres to farm up and keep himself safe because he does not want to get ganked by Illusion, especially since Illusion is level five and trying to hit that level six in the jungle. And with the extra XP he got from the first blood, it's helping him uh, kind of kind of snowball himself out of the jungle and uh, hit level six and try to maybe gank by. Well, it's kind of expected for yeah. Cassidy. And you go down in CS early on and then you just kill everybody later yeah. <laughs> in the game. Uh, for Zonda top lane, though, we talked about how well he does in that uh, Rengar versus Renekton matchup. Uh, but with that early dive not working out so well, it does give a kill and uh, probably at least the next four or five minutes over to PDD, regardless of, uh, of, jungler, of jungler ganks. So at least for now, Looking to prioritize that top lane. Illusion is sat up there for what has been basically the first three minutes of uh, the game after going for his early buffs. But for Nunu, looking to come down bottom lane on a kid. All right, there's going to be the ice blast on a kid right now. He's forced to shift away, still has flash, pops the barrier. Piercing light comes out through the exhaust, though. Not much damage from that cryboy, and everybody else is going to run right on out. Ice blast connects, and he's able to just heal it off and shrug it out. And uh, after that, it kind of. Kind of just a barrier blown in an exhaust. So did they have their flashes for a little bit more uh, mobility in the next fight? While ABC and Zitai are going at it in the mid lane, Null Sphere comes out, but not going to choose to chase it one, chase it down. He's going to get the farm and uh, try to establish a little bit of his zone since Zitai is a little low on mana. But illusion up top. Yeah, he's got it out by awards. So looking for the dive. Mm. I think this is actually going to go a lot better now. Nunu will have blood boil and will have the ability to run top lane he, as quickly as possible. He's showing himself. Fault breakers charging up right now. It does connect. The stun comes out. He's going to pop the ultimate and go invisible and be just fine. He gets out of there. Has full stacks. Can sustain back up with that roar. So it looks like that dive was not as successful as the. Uh... Actually, no, it was pretty successful. It forced up the ultimate. They could loop back around, and his flash and that are still down. Yeah, that's the thing are about they mid? Uh -oh. Rengar. They are going to roam for the blue buff respawn at 725, I believe. A little bit later on. No, no, no. It's actually later because it started red. So they're not going to be there for the respawn. They avoided the ward, too, in the mid lane. But Wins is going to actually spot them out. And here comes ABC. He's going to pop Dom. PDD's popping Dom. It's really early. Flashes in. Gets the stun. And there's the assault and battery. And PDD picks up the second kill of the game oh. with a nice roam from the top lane, leaving Zonda up there and just completely bullying around the map with the help of Illusion. And that's going to be next ABC as the second death for TPS. Yeah, like you said, avoiding the ward and making it right through the blue buff. You don't really expect to Renekton, who's been top lane the entire game, to just show up in your jungle. And now they're getting dragon. And then run you over. Yeah, IG capitalizing off of that perfectly. It's not the kills you get, it's what you do with them. And with the first kill of the game coming at, like, or the second kill rather, there for PDD, coming in around the seven minute mark, it's an incredibly early dragon for IG. A nice eight minute dragon, a nice almost 2,000 gold lead at this point, showing their strengths right now. Roman as a team and uh, coordinating really well. We do see Zana and PDD trading back up top. He's just jumping between the brushes right now. Oh, real gonna apply a little bit of pressure to Kid, but they shrug it off, get the hit, uh, nice little heal out there. And uh, it's gonna be still oh real dominating that bot lane after um, a nice back, uh, not a nice back, but a force back onto Kid, where it just snowballed his CS lead very far. 
Exactly. It's 15 CS. It's going to be very uh, effective for O'Reel. Now, keep in mind, O'Reel plays just about everything. Uh, he was the jungler for TPS, and then Wins came in from the uh, Gamma Bears lineup, I believe it was, and he's He's just been a really uh, big source of strength in the jungle for TPS. Now, uh, rather than just sit uh, O'Reel on the bench, they're like, hey, you're still a great player. We're going to put you as AD carry. That's exactly what he's doing down there in the bottom lane, very effectively like we discussed. With both mid laners, level 6, they're going to be both very mobile, very hard to gank, and with a lot of roam pressure on the map too, something that Cassidy does very, very well. So look to see hmm. who gets that on first. Looks like it's the tie going to get on towards bot lane, not quite going to head that way just yet. Just attempting to drop a ward down there, which he does. So they have the entrance of the red covered right there. He's going to just use his blue buff stack. He's actually not building a tier like we uh, normally have seen so far. We see True Shot Barrage come out to clear some of the wave, help him push. And uh, ABC he has, uh, has caught up a little bit. He's stacking up his tier, looking for a Saros Embrace. Might see a rod come in from him uh, later on in this game, or just go straight for the Death Cap Zoid Staff and try to just blow people up in one shot. The Zoid Staff. The a Zoid great staff. anime and also a pretty <laughs> effective lineup there, uh, or item, Sadie. Is roaming once again with Illusion. They're trying to bully out ABC here, but this time there was a war that they walked through as they did get pinged out. BDD <laughs> pops the Dominus early. He's looking to go is in. Like Ballbreaker is coming, and it's Assault and Battery on the next ABC, but he gets the Rift Walk over the wall. Wins is there. Absolute zero being channeled. Gets stunned out. But Illusion getting bursted down. Ignite comes out, and O'Reel gets the kill. Now BDD <laughs> looks to be next. Null Sphere comes out. The slow as well. Red buff being applied from O'Reel. He gets the passive. A heal from Zatai to help PDD trying to run, but oh, the pursuit wins. is on. Zatai going to pick up wins on the back with the help of the spear and the cougar form. Now Zazai comes back in, but ABC from the side blowing him up. O'Reel gets a double kill and now a double buff. And here comes Kid and Lover Cryboy, but it looks like they're not in time, so they turn it into a three for one in favor of TPS. A really good fight. Oh my god, yeah, oh really good fight there is right. And Lucian coming in there, three kills right off the bat. Every single kill going straight to the AD carry. No Trinity Forces this time, it's a straight up oh. BF sword. The buy for O'Reel, and you gotta, the dive a little bit forced. PDD, like you said, ulted very early, didn't have the full duration of that Dominus before he went in, and his presence lacking in the top lane means that Zonda just gets to do whatever he wants. That includes getting a lot of CS lead, it includes taking down the first turret of the game, and just across the map, Type A Sniper is coming out to what you'd expect to be a gold lead, but actually just bringing it to even versus IG. Yeah, that Dragon and the early uh, pressure as well as kills helped uh, keep IG still in this gold lead. So they're abusing that one. And the turret that now picked up, uh, the first turret of the game actually picked up, like you said before, by Zonda. So they're keeping up in the gold. They're still down by a measly 100. That comeback at it is at any point. But Kid still farming out, going for the Trinity Force first. But being three kills behind, that BF sword is going to be huge in the lane for O'Reel. Yeah, when you go for Trinity Force versus a Bloodthirster, it's kind of an interchangeable item by pattern for a lot of AD carries. Uh, the Bloodthirster, incredibly good for lane dominance, but the power spike much, much higher when you hit that Trinity Force, uh, especially just since it gives you so much utility. Kid going to be looking for a Sheen to come up next, but Kid's actually been forced back to base several times, and like you mentioned, the CS deficit early on, level deficit as well. It really hasn't been a big source of strength in that bottom lane for IG. Oh, but up top, we actually have Illusion roaming up once again. Zana getting get sent out by PD there. A little bit of harass from the Call of the Meek. They have a pink ward in that brush. They know there is no ward there. And are they going to look to camp this one out? Are they going to actually prioritize killing Zana? He's got a Giant's Bolt and a Chain Vest. He's almost got a Sunfire Cape. So he is still going for that very standard build that he is normally known, I guess, known for. This is what we've seen him do so far the past two days in a row. It's Sunfire, Spear of Visage, and then he builds some damage, so he establishes that he is a sustaining monster. Mm -hmm. In the mid lane, though, Archangel Staff is almost complete for uh, next ABC. We do see Athene's done for Zatai, so the very staple uh, item in there is complete. So next, we're going to probably see him build for a lot more AP and try to spike up the damage on those spears. Yeah, the three assists actually coming towards Cassidy were really, really huge uh, because he went very, very early game. He built a, uh, he started with the Crystalline Flask as a Doran's Ring as well. Won't see the Rod of Ages. Oh, PDD actually up. popped the ultimate up top going in onto Zonda right now. He's going to do a ton of damage, chunk him out. The dot damage from the passive, though, going to just force him back out, and he will back on <laughs> off and just, just still sustain yeah. back up with the Roar. Yeah, Zonda's just, just like, oh, you're trying to fight me. That's, that's cool. I'm just going to continue to heal up, stay underneath that turret, trade the damage right back away and continues to see us uh, without really caring too much about that. That's Dominus down, but with Zonda still having his ultimate, he's pretty much immune to getting ganked. He has tons of sustain from the two health potions he has running, as well as the empowered battle roar. He's, he's completely happy up there. He took his turret. All he has to do is defend. 
and that puts the uh, the pressure on the rest of IG to make something happen. Because PDD really can't get a whole lot done versus Zonda, despite having that early two kill advantage. Yeah, and also what we forgot to talk about was that the tier one in the bot lane fell with a nice uh, aggressive push from Wins, and we're seeing a blue buff go on over to Zatai. They have the timing of the dragon right now. They're gonna drop a pink ward, try to take control of that one, clear out the ward in there. It's gonna spawn right now, actually, in that next second. So they're gonna initially go on it first, and I wonder. Ken wins, get it with a, uh, a consumed smite, steal. It looks like Dropping he's heading for it, quickly. but they're not going to be able to go for it. They're going to give it up. The four members of IG will be too dominant, and the second dragon of the game going to go over to IG once again. And so it's just going to be a free blue buff for next ABC, but really not, not a lot of contesting of that dragon. Number one and two now going to IG, like you said. So for IG, they're getting a lot of global gold, but their global gold respawns. Yeah. The two turrets taken by Taipei snipers now, are uh, they're not going to come back. And that's top turret, bottom turret, both outer turrets down. Looking to put some pressure on the mid lane as uh, you can really see O'Real has that Bloodthirster completed with only two out of three items. Wow. For that Trinity Force on Kid, O'Real is just going to be such a monster. Three kills picked up in that early exchange. Just going to be know, really game changing if TPS want to group up and push down this middle turret. What's weird is Mistake is kind of in the mid lane helping ABC out. He, he was waiting around the side. I was wondering if he's going to go for like a Rift Walk into Giant Growth combination with that one. But uh, we haven't really seen Wins make any plays in other lanes besides that mid lane to help with the dive and then bot lane to push a turret. There's a ping actually coming out right now as they might attempt to go on to PDD here, Ice Blast and Absolute Zero can kite him pretty well, but they spot him out. He walks into the tri bush. They back on out. There's no wards from the side of PDD up top there, so they will just give up that pressure and let Zonda do his thing, which is just farm and be a tanky menace. PDD, though, built a Brutalizer and now not going for straight damage, but oh, going Dominus. in with Dominus as Zonda's going to sustain back up and just run right on out. As PDD without Slice and Dice and the stun can't really do anything else. Zonda just walks away. He's like, oh, that's, that's an interesting ability you have there. I'm going to watch you as I walk back towards the minions. And just farm and heal back up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mid lane, we did see a spear land from Zatai on to next ABC, forced him back to base. That is going to be the Archangel staff completed. Grabs boots and a ton of consumables, actually. Rift walking his way back towards mid. And I, I like the sort of passive start to this game for uh, Taipei snipers. They were totally content to just sit in lane and just farm it out for you know 15, 20 minutes. It was actually the initiation by IG that sort of forced TPS into playmaking mode. And hey, man, they were able to rise to the occasion. Three kills picked up there. And that just means that O'Real has a lot of pressure with that Bloodthirster, but he immediately goes for the home guarded Berserker Greaves next. It's a very early third tier buy. All right, so going to prioritize a lot of the mobility he can get, and it just it's a lot less time spent in the base, so you just get right on out. In the mid lane, though, we see a little bit of a group coming in from IG. They're going to uh, just hold up the push coming in from Zonda, who was roaming around. Mistake, though, doing a really cool thing, which is roam towards the mid lane and eat up those traps so nobody else takes him, and uh, then he's just going to head right on back down. But these are pre nerf traps, though, so they last a long time, and uh, he's going to maybe look to eat that one as they head to the lane. Looks like no, but they're going to go down bot and uh, clear out the wave. A true shot rush does land across those minions, help a little bit of kid farm, but shove out the lane, which uh, Aurel is looking to actually meet up. All right, so we probably shouldn't see too much action. We're going to see a little bit of a gank top lane from wins, but Renekton and Rengar, they're both so tanky. This shouldn't actually be too devastating. The Bola connects as well as the Empowered Bola. Ice Blast going down. Ignite as well. PDD gets the Dominus off cooldown. Absolute Zero being channeled out. Zonda going to get stunned out. PDD trying to slice and dice his way, but it's not enough. Assault and Battery through the stealth. It's going to be Illusion getting the kills. A tie roaming up as well as ABC. Can they chase this one down? Rift walk up in a couple seconds. He's out of there. Vault Breaker is charging, but it's not enough. And that's going to be a one for none. And Zonda going down after a really nice uh, timed out oh, Assault battery from Illusion. Yeah, and Zatai showing up there. I thought it was just going to be the 2v2, but Zatai is just like, I don't really like those odds. We're going to go throw an extra player up top. And that's going to be the first turn of the game for IG taking it down. Can Type A Snipers make a play elsewhere on the map? Oh. We saw O'Real just solidly split pushing down the bottom lane. Kids ah. holding mid. Playing it safe. Playing it safe and smart. Holding back, not extending any further into ABC because a riff walk into a slow, into a sphere would be very dangerous. We already see the counter warding coming in from Cryboy as well as Illusion been dropping ping wards back and forth. But Mistake, with an Oracle's noticing this, will be able to counter out those wards coming in from IG. 
So TPS responding really well. We're going to see Kid and Zatai just pushing out mid lane and maybe a five-man group made as PDD going to not go towards top anymore and look to join his team. And Dragon's in a minute and a half. No surprises here. We talked about the Southeast Asian meta where you just sit your side laner off to the side, let Zonda get uh, Spirit Visage, Sunfire Cape, and then Trinity Forest. And once you get that uh, those three core items on Rengar, you just you pretty much just do whatever you want. <laughs> now it's PDD returning that top lane. He's actually itemized a little bit of early offensive itemization in the Brutalizer to see if that's what the Doctor ordered to take on Zonda, who's... He's just ridiculous right now. His Rengar is something you really can't shut down early on. You can see 0-2, but still able to CS, able to push yep. the wave out. That's all he's designed to do. It's also really interesting, his build. If you look at, he's got five in the Empowered War, four into the Bola, and then one into the Q. So not prioritizing damage, just sustaining uh, kite potential with mm -hmm. the Bola as well as the Root. And we're seeing a blue buff get tossed on over to Zatai, as well as Mistake. Gonna get hit by a Crescendo right now. Kid gonna go in Power Core, but giant growth. And he's gonna flash away from the last Mystic Shot. Absolute zero and the calling coming out but no kill to follow, and that is going to be the end of that one, and Dragon in 40 seconds still. <laughs> yeah, the culling doing absolute zero there, as it did not land, and that is going to be disengage once again. Now, Dragon up in 40 oh. seconds. Zonda going to heal up a little bit, but there is Dominus down from PDD. Looking mm. to take Zonda very low. I think he's going to just shrug it off, throw the bullet, turn around, <laughs> and just get right on out of there. And he's going to pop the ultimate and turn around here. PDD going to be the target. Whiff walk in. Slow comes out as well. So Nose feel a jump in with the bola from Zonda. He can't slice and dice his way through that one. And it's going to be next ABC getting oh, the kill. But here comes the tie and illusion. Forcing the flash on his own. Assault and battery coming in as well as the spear. But the flash from ABC oh, kids there. gets him out. Kid coming in. The spear going to be blocked out by O'Real to keep him safe. Tower shots as well as Ignite drops oh, on his tie. Can he get it? The heal doesn't get it in time. Mistake gets it with Ignite. And that is going to be a two for none in favor of TPS as they just completely kite that one out and just barely saved their lives. <laughs> O'Real actually used Relentless Pursuit to body block the, the spear, spear yeah. that would have gotten a kill. And with Zatai making a little bit of a mistake there, going down, like you said, a two for zero in favor of TPS. And TPS, I feel like this is something that TPA used to do. They would be totally content to just play their passive game and force their opponents to make plays. And every single time IG has done this, with a few notable exceptions up in that top lane, Taipei Snipers have been able to fire back, and now not only do they pick up that two for zero, they're going to take their first dragon of the game and shift a little bit of that global gold back into their favor. Yep, and they're still down by 1.2k IG. Their map and gold pressure has been phenomenal. <laughs> BDD and Zana just kind of ignoring each other in the mid lane. They know they can't kill each other right now. Just so tanky coming in, and uh, he's got the attack speed as well as some of the crit and a lot of armor. But now, a four-man group in this <laughs> blue brush. Is Illusion going to walk into the bait or going to get caught Fnatic? out? Is that you? <laughs> yeah, Fnatic, right? You guys waiting in the brush? I'm not sure, but they are waiting for a uh, very nice catch here. I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to find anyone. Illusion in the area has All right, oracles. they ping. Blood Boil on Lucian right now. He's going to spot them out. They're going to back on out. And uh, TPS playing it smart, playing it safe. They will just disengage and not try to extend it to anything too crazy as five members of IG were in that mid lane. All right, and that's actually the Bushwhack on an XABC. They see him recalling. So IG, they're going to make a strong push down here in the mid lane. PDD might go for the dive on Zonda. Does draw that turret aggro, but just tanking it up. He does not care. Yeah. And out of position, a great rotation from IG. Able to take down second mid tier turret and the turret advantage now finally in their favor at 22 minutes. Minutes. Yep, as well as a nice little gold advantage. We're going to see them rotate towards that blue buff. They're waiting in the brush right now. They're trying to do the same thing that TPS just tried to do to them. <laughs> so we will see if they aggress forward. There's no warts in that front brush that they can see with the oracles. They're going to group up as four right now. PDD going to join them. He looked like he was going back, but he's going to stay with the team and try to just capitalize on this. One kill or two kills could oh, mean a Baron. TPA mistake going to go in right now. Illusion's going to just zone him back off. Assault and Battery is up. Ice Blast comes in. Spear does not connect the Kali to cut a little bit of damage. PDD Going into the back line, but there's Zonda. He's gonna just tank up four members as well as Giant Growth. Absolute zero getting channel Christian to interrupt that one. Illusion gets Zonda, but they're getting really low as ABC gets it with the Null Sphere. He's gonna get kited back and forced to riff walk away. True Shot Brush connects across this one. Kit going out to O'Real as well as he's forced to flash and barrier away. Zatai picks up Mistake on the side. Oh, Zatai's Can gonna they kill get everyone. wins or O'Real? Zatai is gonna pounce in. Spear comes out and connects. Double kill for Zatai chasing down wins at this point. Blood Boy not going to be enough. Does he have flash? It looks like no. He's going to stop in the brush and try to juke this one out. Going to go back and forth. Just do some cheeky movements with this Atai with the triple kill through that whole fight. They just went four for uh, none. Oh, four for one, excuse me, in favor of IG. 
Yeah, only PDD dying there. I feel like O'Reel's decision to auto attack minions during that team fight probably wasn't the best damage maximization option there for him. And uh, also probably the barrier very late. And by that time, uh, you saw it. Next ABC actually got chunked to half health by PDD. Yes, he did die, but he made he took it. Next ABC out of the fight. He was not able to get in there. He, uh, Next ABC wanted to do exactly what Zatai did, but because Zonda wasn't able to do to Zatai what PDD did yeah. to Next ABC, oh, yeah. the mid lane pressure there is Zatai just completely cleaning that fight up. He actually positioned himself by the ward in the blue side, so he just completely took complete control of that fight, throwing the spears on the side, staying perfectly safe. And now, with that, there's a lot of pressure for IG, uh, for TPS to deal with because they now lost a tier 2 down bot, they had the four kills go over to IGN's. Uh, Four and two, Deathcap completed another uh, blasting one picked up, so now looking for possibly the Void Staff for Zatai, and those spears are gonna hurt. Because Nidalee is so safe, she can afford to itemize a lot of CDR, a lot of damage, stuff that Cassidy would, would love to have, but can't because he's just a melee mage. You need a lot of defensive options there. You can see the uh, Zanya's Hourglass coming out. You can also, uh, I mean, you're going to have Seraph's Embrace here in about 50 more stacks, so it will be coming out very, very soon. But just a little bit of a different style. You can see IG playing to that style, uh, just witnessing Zatai able to clean up that last fight. Also, Lover Cryboy, you know, we, we haven't talked about him too much over the game. Zero and zero for that bottom lane performance, but y you gotta look at the, su the, uh, the success of those assists. The three in that column transferred directly into, uh, I think that those three kills onto yep. Zatai, and a great start out there with a the crescendo in that fight to really turn it around in favor of IG. Stopping that absolute zero was key, as well as hitting Zonda with that one. We do see now a potential group on this bot lane inhibitor turret. There's four members down there, and uh, they might look to siege that one up. They have the ability to use those spears with the blue buff on him. And uh, Zatai gonna be a key factor here. Spear chunks away at about a fourth of Wind's health. We do see a lot of damage coming in from O'Reel though. But there's certain static shiv completed, so a ton of damage coming in from those auto attacks. Oracle's now taking complete control of this red side of the jungle, and IG have now establish a complete dominance of this red side. Now, Zonda's been forced to back. He's not going to have a Trinity Force or be able to complete that Spectre Scowl into a Spirit Passage just yet. The pressure coming out from IG, keeping him from being that big split push lane bully. We've talked about him being every single game previously. And 0-3, it's a little bit uncharacteristic. It's not the yeah. biggest deal oh, to yeah. Zonda because he may mainly just fights minions with that. He keeps the split push on. But IG are not letting him be that split push monster. Now it's actually PDD returning to the top lane. Oh, push that one in. Oh, oh real just got <laughs> taken down to below half HP off of just one spear. So Zatai can completely control out some of these team fights with some perfect spears. Seraph's Embrace completed there for next ABC, who also has home guard boots. So double home guard boots there for Taipei Snipers. And you look over at IG, and they still have, uh, what is that, three unupgraded tier one boots there. And it's interesting to watch the way that Southeast Asians play. They really don't prioritize boots at all during the early phase. And once the outer turrets go down, there's like, oh my goodness, we need all the boots we can possibly buy. And we talked about O'Real picking up very early home guard boots. But not really able to use them very effectively, and team fight positioning in the last uh, fight definitely going the way of IG uh, using, uh, even without you know the boots for repositioning. Now, yep. dragon gonna go down here to IG. Nobody there to contest. I've seen one dragon go the way of Taipei snipers, but at least for right now, IG reestablishing control of that global objective and setting themselves up at about a 7,000 gold lead as well. Heading back to base to buy up for what could be the next big Baron push of the game. Yeah, they have pink wards, but still those two wards out there from Mistake have been controlling that side. That will give me a little bit of vision and some safety to TPS to show that they are not doing Baron, not trying to sneak this one out and bait it. But now Mistake has some time to leave the base. He's going to head out there, go clear out the pink ward, use that Oracles. He should be able to spot it out. There we go. They pinged onto it, but he's not going to waste the time. <laughs> he does not want to get caught out. That'd be a huge mistake for him. And for the side of TPS, we do see everybody roaming around. It's high hanging out there, PDD as well. And they are starting to now make their way over there. They might try to just clear this out and bait in a brush for the side of IG. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Taipei Snipers, they're going to be forced to clear out their mid lane, push things out, clear wards around from Baron. So they're always going to be a little bit visible on the map for yep. IG. 
that could set up nice picks or at least spear opportunities for the tie that could start kind of a chain reaction. You chunk somebody low, they have to go back, it's 4v5, and then you pressure an objective off of that. Yeah, and a beautiful true shot barrage just came out from Kid to push out the bot lane, which was building up really big for uh, the side of TPS. It's going to stop them, but now over the wall, there's a ward in the pit that wasn't spotted off by that Draven ward right there. So they're going to go in, but the side of TPS does know they can see it, and they're going to be forced to disengage as they see other people come in. ABC chunking out Kid. Here comes Zada with the, the calling. calling in the back. A ton of damage. Kid is going to be forced to flash and shift Huge out. Huge crescendo. A crescendo to stop three members from the side of TPS right there. They're going to back out and disengage. No one dies. Kid barely gets out. He's going to sustain off some golems, get a heal from Nidalee. Mistake trying to take out the ward as well as keeping Baron Aggro. Just get one shot on him and one shot of PNAD, so splitting that one up. But TPS hold out the Baron in a really, really key ward right there. Yeah, MVP Baron ward right there. The pink ward just a little bit too far out of the Baron pit to spot that one out, and that just allowed Taipei Snipers a great opportunity. Kidman dropped down to like 10% hit points before the fight even started. Yeah. So IG are just like, all right, we know how this fight goes. Not going to commit to that one. And once again, Lover uh, Cryboy there with a great disengage. Sona Crescendo just really stopping that fight. And so for now, IG forced to back off. But now they're going to come back. Uh, you see Trinity Force, Last Whisper, almost that Blade of the Ruined King completed for Kid. But it's the Death Cap Void Staff, Athenes and Holy Grail on Zatai. All right, we see Illusion getting initiated on right now. As, oh, Real will pick up the kill. They're going to try to trade off the blue buff. Real, a Kid is going in the back right now, as well as PDD trying to zone off wins. And Zana going to jump in on the back. Kid goes down as Zana going huge, but does take down Oh Real with them. Spears chase this one out. PDD going to look to try to catch out Zana right now. Really tanky. The Bushwhack does connect. He lands a Bola to slow them down just a little bit. But that is going to be a two for one in favor of TPS. And there you go, Taipei Snipers. They lose a reel, but they take down Kid, who, like we said in the last fight, dropped down very low early on. This time, fully dead. His illusion down as well. No jungle pressure out there means that Winds could look to do some cheeky fair and stuff, at least for positioning. And uh, for, for Mistake, this is his, his favorite time of the game because he doesn't have to worry about getting sniped out by Spears. He can go clear out the entire jungle. Yep, and Zana now with a double buff, looking strong. He's going to be able to uh, either fi finish off those Merc Treads and go for a little bit more damage, which is what he looks for normally at uh, the end of uh, the fight. And it looks like we are going to uh, have to pause the game just a little bit. All right, it doesn't look like we're going to start things right back up. A uh, little bit of downtime there, but getting things back underway. Now, next ABC, farming things up 86 gold off of that Wolf Camp. So yeah, a lot of gold. need <laughs> a lot of gold coming his way. The Zhonya's Hourglass uh, for next ABC is going to be absolutely game changing. It allows him to initiate fights, dish out a lot of burst damage, and then have that two and a half seconds that Zhonya's give you to not only look completely fabulous, but also get your cooldowns back, be able to rift walk out back to safety and get another spell rotation away. Wow, actually Zhonya jumping in on the PDD who's trying to maybe force an engage here or zone off for this Baron that is being three manned right now, currently by three members of IG. We're seeing Zhonya leap in. They're going to clear out the ward in the brush, and now they're going to try to bait this and maybe force a disengage. The Baron is very low at this point. They're looking to commit to it. PDD is zoning with the ultimate. Lover C Boy going to get chunked oh, up. So is ABC. ABC with the spear. Here comes Zana, a two-man crescendo as well on top of that one. Zana taking up everything he can. The calling is coming out of the back. Zana is giant growth. He's forced to flash out and leap away. But Mistake will go down for the side oh. as well as a huge spear from Zatai taking down next ABC as now with Baron on their side. They're going to force a flash and chase down wins. Zatai is not going to look to let him get away. Spear comes out. He dodges it away with the blood boil. Drops the pushback. Let's him get away. But that's two for none on Baron now on IG side. This looks like it's going to be an inhibitor push. Yeah, Mistake and next ABC down. It's only going to be O'Real, who without the culling won't have a lot of great wave clear opportunities against this middle turret, which will certainly fall. Inhibitor to fall next. And uh, I got to say, next ABC without the Zhonya's Hourglass complete in time for that fight. Got chunked out, taken down very early on. And O'Real, uh, the culling, it's great for sieging turrets. It's great for clearing out minion waves. It's not great for DPS. It's not great for positioning. Both things that Kid just had in spades there. Huge true shot barrage and 2 1 and 3. He's been 0 0 for most of this game. Yeah. But finally coming out, having a great team fight against O'Real, who had an incredibly big early power spike with a triple kill. Now, really, kind of not coming into his own. Triple items completed for him, so it's a nice place to be. You're just gonna have to do something with it that probably does not include standing around culling the open air. Yeah, um, the side of Kid, though, he's building towards that Blade of the Rune King. He's got the uh, Bilgewater Cutlass currently uh, sitting on quite a bit of gold, so when he does go back, he's looking to finish that one off. He has 1800 in the bag. Next ABC, gonna farm a bot lane, and uh, 
He's kind of he's kind of lacking the damage we're normally used to seeing from a 30 to 40 minute build on Kassin with the Death Cap and Void Staff. He went for the uh, survivability. The shield is great from Saris as well as Azonia's, but like you said, Azonia's not completed in time that, uh, for that last fight, so kind of hurt him there, as well as the spears from Zatai just being on point. All right, now Baron buff is on IG. They will choose to take down Dragon, which is uh, it's not questionable. It's a great uh, chance to just take a free global objective. Pushing is going to be the name of the game now with Baron buff with that inhibitor down. Keep in mind, this is still patch 3.13, uh, so having an inhibitor down affects all lanes, which is something that changed very effectively in uh, the uh, in the next patch, the preseason. So for right now, all lanes are going to be pushing in, and that means that Zonda's job as a split pusher is going to be even more important. As uh, without teleport, he's forced to rejoin the team, but does have uh, on the hunt to, or not all on the hunt, uh, thrill of the hunt to get back to the rest of his team with a little bit of move speed, a chance for initiating, but I don't think Taipei Snipers are really going to be the ones initiating this next engagement. Yeah, unless they find some perfect engagement with the Baron, and now we're going to see Bushwhack oh, do a ton of damage. Spear oh kills my him! God. Okay, Zatai unstoppable. Holy crap! <laughs> All right, Deathcap, nearly see large red boys. staff. Poor support, I know his feelings, as the spear one-shot him with the help of the bushwhack. And the mistake for Lulu is really stepping on that bushwhack, reduced his magic resistance down to, I believe, like 25. Oh. So there's actually <laughs> bonus damage being dealt by Zatai, who, if I check this out, I believe has, yeah, 20 flat magic penetration 40%. After, after 40%. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, plus the magic resistance reduction from those bushwhacks. There's, yeah, no resistances there at all. Calling to come out, the minions getting culled. PDD is just standing there, taking the turret. <laughs> he just does not care. Mistake now spawning. There's going to be initiation incoming in as well as Wade's getting hit by the crescendo. The absolute zero got canceled. Illusion picks up one giant growth on ABC. He's going to zone us, but he is going to die as soon as he comes out. Zonda's trying to do something. Double kill for Illusion. That is going to be, looks like the inhibitor while PDD's diving. The spear connects from Zatai that take down Oh, real, And this is going to be oh game one as Mistake eats a spear in the base. I wonder if Zatai's going to try to snipe him off. It looks like no. Flash comes out. Barry comes out. And that is going to be game one over to IG over TPS. An incredible performance by Zatai. It finishes the game at 7, 2, and 5. But you really have to look at the way that IG played that early game. They, they tried to make plays, and you got to give some props to TPS, who, for the most part, were able to counter those initiations out. Early game, triple kill onto O'Real, continuing to be able to kind of beat IG at their own game. But IG just... It's the late game power of the poke from Italy and just bet.